Hello everyone, what's up? In this video I'm going to first do an unboxing of the Gallery Swallowtail and Mobius airbrushes and share my first impressions on them in terms of build quality and fit and finish. After that I'll show you how I tested both airbrushes in real world conditions using different primers, lacquer paints and acrylics. So if you're in the market for a new detail airbrush or maybe you just want to know more about trigger airbrushes, this video is for you. Before we start, my usual disclaimer with reviews. Gallery was very kind to send me these for review, but this is not a paid promotion, nor does the brand have any say about the content of this video. All right, guys, so here we are with an unboxing of some nice new airbrushing toys by Gallery. So thank you, Gallery, by the way. Let's see what do we have here. Two nice cardboard boxes, as you can see. Let's check out the biggest one first, shall we? Aha, uh -huh, look at that. Solitail Collaborative Edition Barbatus Rex. Very nice box. Let's see. Look at that. That's a nice display there. An exploded view of the airbrush and its components. Hmm. Some instructions. If I'm able to open them. Well, open them, yes, getting this stuff closed, maybe later. <laughs> every stroke, every detail is a testament to our shared passion for art artistry. Says Barbatus Rex, it would appear. Let's have a look. <laughs> Look at that. I'll close in a bit. Some extra O rings. That's a nice touch. Bottle of lube for the airbrush, that is. And right here we can see something that is 
very interesting. 0 0.5 millimeter needle, 0 0.7, and the one that comes with it is a 0 0.28, so similar to a 0 0.3. Whoops. Hmm. That's certainly a new feeling for me. Very, very nice action. Very smooth. Fits my hand quite well. I don't have really large hands, mind you, even though I'm pretty tall. Nice, very nice. Two cups. These are the needle sets, presumably. Yep. The nozzle sets, excuse me. So that's a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Let's have a look at it in a second. 0.7. With its own nozzle cap, of course. A really large cup. This reminds me of my Pache Talon. Let's see if I can open it. Well, there we go. That took some effort, to be honest. Wow, look at that. Not sure whether you guys can see it on camera, but that's really, really polished. Very well machined, super smooth. That should help with cleaning the paint out. The lid itself also has like a mirror finish. Yep, I can actually see myself there. Let's have a look at the smaller cap, cup, not cap. Let's see if I can open this one. Well, Holy moly. I had the same problem a few weeks ago when I got my new Harder and Steinbeck Infinity Mayu with one of the two <laughs> cups. I really struggled to get it open. There we go. Wow. Oh yeah. That is, the inside of that is like chrome. Wow. Beautiful finish. Hopefully functional too, not just form, but function. Let's get that cup attached. Very easy to thread in. Let's see if I can get it open now. Yeah. Very sensitive. I've never tried a trigger airbrush before, mind you.
it has like a stop half of the way. I believe that's it will be for air first and then paint. You can see the needle there, the needle travel in the back. Interesting. It has a limiter on the back. Yeah. I usually leave those all the way opened up. Awesome. I'm looking forward to using this. I have a plan about that. Let's keep it like that for now. And let's check out the other one, shall we? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> so that's the swallowtail. Three needle sizes in one, like we said. That's pretty fancy. Nice box with a magnetic lid, by the way. Very nice. And what will this be? Let's check it out. As you can see, that's a Mobius 0.2. Let's get this open. Premium series, 0.2, let's see. That's a different style box, also with an exploded view of the airbrush inside. Very nice. Little customer appreciation card, okay. Same instructions, I think. Oh no, these are... Oh wow, in German as well. And French. Let's see. Spanish. Fine, multilingual, quick start guide, but this is longer than the other document. And let's have a look at this baby. Oh wow. More O-rings. Always appreciate it. One of the first things I do whenever I buy an airbrush is get a needle and nozzle set, like an extra one, I mean, in a different size, and o rings. Always, every time. And yes, I have a few airbrushes now. <laughs> I'll be showing you my collection, so to speak, in my next video. Wow. That's beautiful. Very light.
Of course, I'll have to test this, but I'm really liking the shape of that trigger. I think the tension needs adjustment. But I will play around with that in due course. The finish is beautiful. It has these cutouts here and there. Interesting. That's a regulator. Let's get the paint cup on, shall we? If I can get it out. There we go. Oh, that opened by itself, so to speak. Whoa. That finish is just beautiful. I think that's more reflective, smoother than the other one. Let's put it on. Whoops. Sorry, sausage fingers here. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Don't want to get the needle damaged on day one, so I won't be taking it out just yet. Definitely gonna get it full of fingerprints very quickly with such a high polish mirror finish, but I'm not complaining about that. Wow, really nice. As I said before, I do have one of the supposedly most premium airbrushes that there is, an Infinity by HS. And at least in terms of finish and first impressions, this is definitely on par with that, if not above it. I'll be testing this thoroughly, both airbrushes, both in a first or initial test of the two brushes in action, and then I'll do a sort of long-term review of a couple of months down the road, and probably with quite a few models having been painted in between. So, this is my Unboxing of the Mobius 0.2 airbrush. Whoops, let's stick those O-rings in there. And the Swallowtail by Gallery. More coming soon. Thank you, guys. Right, let's begin with our real-world conditions testing, shall we? This is the Space Station Gate by AK Interactive a resin facade kit which I primed with AK Black Primer with Microfiller a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to use AK Grey Microfiller Primer, unthinned, with the Mobius 0.2 airbrush to create a pre-shading effect. Now, using a Microfiller Primer like this should be a really good test given that, well, it's not that easy to spray. I went with a pressure of 22 psi for this. First, I sort of doodled on the surface creating an irregular pattern. This worked great, and the Mobius really shined with perfect paint atomization. Then I got the idea of doing small dots, which also worked really well, but due to my imperfect trigger technique, I started getting some splatter as the paint dried on the tip. On the other hand, I actually liked the sort of sibling effect that this was creating, so I just continued like this. Do bear in mind that the Mobius is perfectly capable of spraying 
that primer flawlessly. I'll show you how to do proper airbrush stippling later with the MAC valve. I thought you might want to see how easy to clean all that primer was. So here it is. First I poured some cleaner into the paint cup. This is a mix of 99% IPA and hops number 9. After removing some of the paint I like to use a microfiber towel. Then since this is a very aggressive lacquer primer I always go for a dedicated product, namely AK Extreme Cleaner. As Corporal Hicks would say, it's the only way to be sure. I started by back flushing and then spraying into the cleaning pot. After that it was time to take the needle out and give it a clean. I don't have good experiences with thin needles like this, but the truth is that this was really easy. Once I put the needle back in, very very gently, I tested the trigger again and I was very pleased to see that it was as smooth as before. The action in this is a thing of beauty by the way. Anyway, I'm very thorough with the cleaning of all my airbrushes, so I always back flush one last time before putting it away. There was no paint residue whatsoever, so mission accomplished. By the way, I prefer 99% IPA without any dilution for all my airbrushes. And I sometimes add hops as I did here. The usual Windex distilled water and IPA mix with a little bit of glycerin added in, which every single YouTuber out there claims they invented themselves, is just not my cup of tea. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a video on this or on airbrush maintenance in general. Time for our next test. This is AK Real Colors APC Interior Green. That was quite of a mouthful. Which is a lacquer paint. That's the main thing. I'm thinning it about 60 to 70% with AK's own thinner. And I'm going to be spraying this with the swallowtail in its 0.5mm configuration. Over the previous pre-shading that is. As you can see I was able to get really close with this trigger airbrush and aim carefully while at the same time taking advantage of the semi-transparent paint mix. The ease with which I was able to do this really impressed me. It was my first time ever using a trigger airbrush and I was expecting less precision or maybe difficulties aiming. Instead using the swallowtail felt like second nature from the very start. What about cleaning you say? Well, similar story. I used a cotton bud to get rid of most of the paint that might be stuck to the walls of the paint cup before I poured the rest into a glass container. As you can see that got rid of most of the paint already. A bit of a clean with a microfiber towel followed, then some back flushing and that took care of most of the rest. I then removed the needle and gave it a good clean. By the way this is a 0.5 like I said before. And after reinserting the needle carefully, I tested the trigger, confirming that it worked as smoothly as before. Mission complete. Now it was time for a stress test. This is One Shot Primer by Ammo of MIG, which as many of you know is relabeled Steinel Res by Badger. Either way, this primer is infamous for being very hard to spray and for creating the worst gunk that you've ever seen inside your airbrush. To make matters worse, this is a 4 year old bottle, so here goes nothing. By way of dilution I simply added about 5 drops of Vallejo thinner. I know right, this sounds like a symbolic gesture. In any case I applied this at just 25 psi with the same 0.5mm needle as before. As you can see the swallowtail passed with flying colors. I did clean the tip after several minutes but the swallowtail performed like a champ here. So how about cleaning the gunk? Here is where the highly polished paint cup makes a difference. Still I needed a couple of passes with the cleaning solution but that is totally normal. Afterwards I removed the cup, another great feature, and I got ready for some more cleaning. By the way those are Teflon seals. You want to have that if you spray solvents all the time like I do. After that it was time to remove the needle and then for that last back flush. 
You know the drill by now. All good. With this torture test done, it was time to test the swallowtail again, but this time with more precision work. My buddy James had asked me if this airbrush was, and I quote, just for priming, so that gave me the idea to show him how far from the truth that is. This is AK 3rd Gen Dunkelgrau, very heavily thinned, with their own thinner, and sprayed at 20 psi. Now I had never used this paint or any of the AK 3rd Gens before, so I wanted to err on the side of caution. I have to say that this worked beautifully, providing smooth atomization and a very gradual building of opacity. When I was done, I added a few drops of this light gray and a lot more thinner, and I got ready to apply highlights without cleaning the airbrush or changing needles. So would I be able to be precise with the solo tail and apply highlights, or would this prove to be just for priming? <laughs> well, I think the results speak for themselves. I'm no expert at all at highlighting or at applying color modulation, but the finish that I got with this was excellent. Instead of getting any sort of granularity, the transitions were very smooth, even with these water-based paints. As for the experience itself, which is very important, it was really enjoyable. Normally, spraying highlights with acrylics, for me, is a bit of a nightmare, as I start getting dry tip more and more until painting is no longer fun. It wasn't the case here. With my swallowtail testing concluded, it was time to use the Mobius again for a special task, using this acrylic liquid pigment from Life Color to add some panel shading with the airbrush. Now this Star Wars Legion repulsor sled is very small and its panel lines are really fine, so for my skill level this is pretty tricky. As a result some of my lines were better than others, but overall I got the effect that I wanted and I really enjoyed it. The last thing that I wanted to try with the Mobius was some proper stippling, thanks to its MAC valve. That's what it's for. After testing it on paper, I started stippling the same liquid pigment onto the surface, and wow, the effect was amazing. The spray pattern was super fine, and the semi-transparent nature of these liquid pigments was perfect for this, way better than normal paints. So, time for the actual review. What do I think about the Gallery, Swallowtail and Mobius 0.2 airbrushes? Well, let's start with the value proposition, shall we? The Swallowtail is the more expensive of the two, currently priced at $99.99 USD right now. At that price, the Swallowtail seems like a no-brainer to me, given how beautifully it works and the fact that it comes not with one, but with three needle and nozzle sets. On the other hand, the Mobius 0.2 is much more of a specialized tool, and I think some of you already will own a detailed airbrush. However, I cannot stress enough how ludicrous the price is at $76.99 US dollars. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that the fit and finish is absolutely amazing. The Swallowtail is a true workhorse, to be sure. But the Mobius is the more premium of the two, regardless of price tags, and I can tell you that it really does deserve the label premium. Now you might be wondering what I'm basing these conclusions on, or what my credentials are. Well, I'm no airbrush artist, and I've only been airbrushing for seven years, but it's been a very, very prolific seven years in terms of my painting output, and well, this here is my airbrush collection. As you can see, I own five other airbrushes, a Badger Patriot 105, which I have customized myself, an H&S Infinity, a Badger Patriot Extreme, an Elmo of Make Cobra, and a Pache Talon. Prior to this, I also had a Sparmax SP35, and a cheapo Green Stuff World airbrush. So all in all, I've tried many different brands, types and price ranges if you like. Speaking of this Sparmax, it cost me 70 euros back then, and its fiddly screw-on brass nozzle did not last me very long. 
Going back to the idea of value, what I meant before is that the fact that the Mobius and the Sparmax cost exactly the same is just astounding. To be honest, it's like being able to buy a premium car for the price of a Lada. <laughs> no offense to Lada owners, of course. In terms of comparing the two gallery to the other airbrushes that I own currently, I think it would be fair to say that overall the gallery are at least on par in quality and user experience with any of these. For instance, if I compare the Swallowtail with my beloved Badger Patriot, the Ammo Cobra and the Pasha Talon, all of which are inexpensive workhorses, I have to say that the gallery compares very well. If you know me well, you know how much I love my customized Patriot, to which I added the high roller trigger and the finger rest from the extreme. Most of what I know about airbrushing today I learned with this brush, so it holds a special place in my heart. On the other hand, it also forced me to learn how to use beeswax to ensure that it seals properly and how to polish the needle to ensure that it works as it should. These are modifications without which the Badger will not perform well. The Swallow Tail, on the other hand, is equally rugged and versatile, but it was really plug and play from day one, with no such faults. As for the Mobius, price wise, it should be a similar airbrush to the aforementioned Sparmax, which I never use anymore and which I would never buy again. And I would definitely not recommend that one. The Mobius is also significantly cheaper than the Badger Patriot Extreme, which is also a detail-oriented airbrush and also has a mag valve or air control dial. And while I like the Extreme, the difference in build quality and fit and finish is huge. And the difference between the two in this regard is so great that the only remaining logical comparison would be, to be honest with you, the Harder and Sinbeck. Now, I will admit that I've only had the Harder and Steambeck for a couple of months, but I would say that I've already put it to good use, for example, with the Grim Yak Tiger that I finished recently. In that project, the HNS worked beautifully. However, if I had known then what I know now, I honestly would not have bought the HNS. For me, the Mobius performs equally well as a detail airbrush, and the tactile and aesthetic elements and the experience so far are equally great with both. That is to say, very, very good indeed. The only discernible advantage that I can see is the greater versatility of the Infinity with its two different needle sizes. In any case, I know that there could potentially be a difference in long-term reliability. The HNS, after all, is not only designed, but entirely manufactured in Germany and it could be that it will withstand the rigors of heavy use better. The price, though, is about triple, three times as much. So for now, I'm going to keep using both the Mobius and the Swallowtail, and I'll report back in a few months with my findings. I guess we'll see, right? Anyways, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Before I let you go, I would like to thank all of my YouTube members. Your generous support makes a real difference for me when it comes to justifying the investment of time that running this channel requires. I'll be back soon, but in the meantime, remember, keep it up and weather it out.